And on that note, I'm curious about recruitment. You know, how do you recruit the young designers? Margaret was talking about <laughs> recruiting our teens yesterday at the Teen Design Fair. But how do you, you know? I was at, yeah, I was at the maternity ward at one of the hospitals. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Get them early. Get them early. <laughs> but the recruiting thing is, it's pretty fascinating. I mean, I think that there are so many contexts where formal training is so critical to doing a job well. And yet I see over and over again um, young designers growing up native to digital experiences and coming with perspectives that are born out of that experience and not through formal training. And i would seen it work pretty well both ways, and I think actually the combination is really fascinating. You get somebody who's gone through a highly rigorous, traditional, even graphic design training, who then takes on interaction, design, coding, and then, you know, we have a designer at Facebook who has been a working freelance interaction designer since he was 12 years old. <laughs> and, you know, on day one had more work experience than most of the people at the company. And I am, you know, not in a position to say that that isn't kind of an amazing thing because he's <laughs> an incredibly mature uh, individual who brings like a ton of experience to it. So I think that is one of the things that's most interesting. You know, how do you continue to bring appreciation for design um, as a craft and design education and marry that with the reality that like, expectations and needs, at least in the digital context, are, are changing pretty rapidly. Um, I can certainly relate to the, <laughs> the significant amount of time spent recruiting, like if we use that specific, specific word. Um, and the, um, I mean, one reason for that is we've, we've found, while it is a lot of work, we're much more successful and we seek out the people that we choose rather than waiting for them to come to us. It's just a sort of operationally not a good use of anyone's time to look through a lot of things that mostly don't fit. Um, but when we're looking at people, it seems that there are th sort of three meta themes that probably describe the team. One are people who show a predisposition to make things and get them out in the world, whatever that means. They're just compelled to. Sometimes they're, um, sometimes the artifacts don't even look like design. Sometimes they're just great writers that write all the time, constantly writing, constantly sharing that. That's interesting. Sometimes they're making products. They're actually making small business ideas and getting them out in the world all the time. There's a whole variety of stuff, but this predisposition to make things and share it. Uh, the second, which is related, is the kind of self-awareness that leads them to educate themselves or know how best they learn. And so the people may have very, you know, seek very formal education. They may do lots of self-education. They learn by doing. But the people who are, are aware of their own learning style and then engage with those things. So it's not about formal education or not. It's much more individual than that. Um, and the, the third one is really the, uh, the, probably the hardest one, which is really uh, taste. I think those others are sort of so, um, there's so much sort of logic that I can use to explain those other ones. And the third one is that last, like, spark, sparkle dust part. <laughs> you're like, does this feel right? And sometimes that's almost like cultural taste. Does this feel right, right for the company culture? And sometimes right. it's the out, output taste. Like, does that, wow, they consistently have beautifully, like, beautiful finesse around their typography. And there's just something there that isn't, that's beyond learnable. And like, when you get those three things, together. That's what mm -hmm. yeah. If I were to yes in on that, I would say um, <laughs> uh, taste or instincts. Yeah. Some, you can see it in a designer's yeah. sense that something in their world experience. So, yep. you know, when you talk about the predisposition to make things or self-awareness is usually drawn. I just look at people who have lots of worldly experience, right? They've traveled. They've, you were there at that particular time, so I knew that that must have been an interesting time for them. Um, I always ask about their personal work for some reason, and for some reason we rarely get to satisfy 100% of this tenacity in the day job. And so somehow, if that intersects with passion, I always discover something that they're doing on the side, 
right? Oh yeah, I print make or you know I, I screen print T-shirts. Oh, tell me why, mm -hmm. right? And through that passion, something's driving them in that self-starter curiosity way. Um, I have a hard, I have a biggest challenge is to tell other leaders that are non-designers what makes designers tick, mm -hmm. and the greatest hire is someone who's constantly curious. They're great problem solvers. It just happens to express itself differently. So great hires have always been curious people. And when they fall in love with problems rather than solutions, that always, and that's hard to tease out in a first meeting. I think it's a very good point. And, it, and it, as, it, as this, this topic relates to the fashion industry, I would say it's, it's, it, 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 that, that notion of, of collaboration makes me really think about how successful fashion is fashion companies build um, their design enterprise around a, commun a community of designers. Mm -hmm. And I think that leads to a, a more nuanced discussion, perhaps, than we've been having about um, you know, designers at the business table and creative leadership. I think there are people within the design enterprise who, for whom it's really critical to be at that table. And in a way, in the fashion system, it's critical for them to have a kind of equilibrium between this art and science, to have a, a, a place at the table where they're discussing what worked last season, or they're discussing what they're seeing in the marketplace, and they're infusing it into the studio. But in fashion, I can say specifically in fashion, it's critical for certain designers to not have that burden mm. and to not even be distracted by it mm. because there is an artistry and this is where the art comes in there is an artistry where that we depend on in the best designers where in a sense they are um, they're uh, it's not even about problems and solutions it's about um, the shape of something or a, the texture of something or a new way to create a seam in something, or um, uh, a, a new way to address a hyperfunctional object like a suit or a suit jacket. But I've, I've seen that, that there is a very delicate balance between sort of the, the artistic burden of a designer in a fa the fashion system a creative director in the fashion system and a chief merchant. They all need to have a certain uh, sensibility for design and they all have uh, relative engagement with, with, within, with the business and, and that engagement has to be purposeful um, and, and I think is, really, is a really delicate thing. I think there's just something really interesting. I, the, really, a lot of themes to all of our stuff. And the three parts of design, I always, always like to kind of hang on to our thinking, making, feeling are the three things. And depending our, on our industry, the hierarchy of how those three balls come together, and also as we kind of advance in our careers, you know, how those three balls interact um, really come. But I think one thing that's really interesting is that when the part I usually about design, I get most excited about is the feeling part. Like the reason, like why do I care, or when you, and, um, you know, the, the craft kind of goes that making, but for that, that feeling part, I think it, throughout anything that is successful, that's the one thing that creating that emotional connection is the, and I think for um, designers who understand that and can can make that happen, that's for me is like where the, like that's where the magic happens. Mm -hmm.